Good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank you for joining us, and we are going to start today with our Ruler of the Month 8, which means we've been here a long time doing rulers. My collection is abundant, and I'm here to help you make your collection abundant as well. Today, I'm going to show you our ruler that is our first one in our collection of six that will be coming. And I do want to just um, let you know that we will be doing our Facebook Live every third on the third Thursday of every month prior to the distribution of the rulers, um, whether we are shipping or picking, you all are coming in and picking them up. So I hope you enjoy today's um, little instruction and um, I'm excited that you've joined us and I hope that you really enjoy the rulers that we're going to be giving. This grouping of rulers is called Boundless Borders, and so that's going to give you an idea that they're really kind of um, ready to get those sashings and those borders all um, prettied up when you're getting ready to quilt that quilt top. So over here I have a whole bunch of fun items. This is everything I used on our first uh, ruler. So our first ruler is called an On Point Template and depending on how you hold it it's either a diamond or it's a square so move, move that honey so that because it oh is it glaring yeah, there we go there we go oh yeah that's better so the one thing about handy quilter rulers is that they have a lot of markings on them and today i have marked um, two of the lines that i will be using and i used what's called ruler stickers and the ruler stickers are $7.99 and they have three different colors and they are reusable and there's 192 of them so if you lose a few you got a whole lot more to use <laughs> so I have marked my ruler um, of what I'm going to be using today on the back we have what's called handy grip and that's so the ruler doesn't slide and the handy grips um, you can purchase them there's 12 strips they're an inch by five inch, and then you just cut them to the size that you want. And it really kind of feels like um, sandpaper, and they run a $9.99, and uh, like I said, for a pack of 12. The other thing that um, you'll see in your packet, we have included a, your packet is going to look like this, and what's inside is an idea sheet, your ruler, and we've included a piece of fabric for you to play on so that you can load it and just practice and have a good time on that one. So your idea sheet um, gives you all sorts of ideas of what to do with that ruler that you've gotten. And I decided that I wanted to do something like this. And this one was really fascinating to me. So I want to do this one here. Whatever, um, whenever you get your packet, down at the bottom at handyquilter.com slash ruler dash of dash the dash month that's a mouthful but that has a video tutorial every month for you to watch and see how to different techniques and ideas on how to use this ruler the other thing that I used I I didn't want to make just a strip quilt I wanted to do something a little bit different so I got this pattern it's called misty mountains and it is available to do in different sizes i actually did a wall hanging and the pattern is 12.99 and that is on our website at be so creative dash less nm dot com someday i'll learn it <laughs> um, okay we have a question yes uh judith mcatee hey judith uh, she wants to know if these rulers can be used on any machine. The, you can only use these rulers if you can get a ruler foot that has that is meant for long arm rulers. So if you have a Bernina, you can get a ruler foot for that and use them because it's adjustable. If your other machines are not long arms, you may have trouble with them. And the reason being is that you can't get to the back of the foot because of the way that the shank is built. So these rulers are a quarter of an inch thick and when you're using a long arm um, you have to have that thickness so that 
the hopping foot doesn't hop over onto the ruler and break it. Um, Judith, um, I'm going to ask you a question because you said you have a baby lock. Do you have a baby lock long arm machine or is it your standard sewing machine? So if you'll pop that in there, uh, we would we can try and answer that question for you, okay? Yes. Um, the other thing that I used are Handy Quilter Echo Feet and you can change the feet out on this and you can make the, um, it's almost like, well, echoing what you've done and they, there's clip-on echo feet as well. So if you don't have um, a handy quilter, you have a different kind of machine, there are clip-ons that will go onto uh, a round closed foot. So that being said, let me show you our sample we're gonna be working on. So you see a lot of stitching out here and all this is is just um, basting because I will be pulling this one off and on and the area that we're going to be using is just right here. I did start on mine just to get it going because we don't have a lot of time together. And so I did this outer uh, square and then I switched my foot and I did the inner square. I echoed it and then I've started my other square. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another outside square right here and then we're going to switch our foot and then we're going to do the inside. So as a reminder, um, you need to make sure that your ruler foot is on and this is the Handy Quilter ruler foot and it's got a, a higher uh, depth to it so that your rulers don't pop right over onto it. I have a question. Uh -huh. Uh, Linda Martindale asked if the Bernina Foot 72 will work with these rulers. Yes, it will, Linda. So the rulers have a notch. You just put it right here. And then um, my two squares butted up to each other. So I want to make sure that um, my other one is going to. So I can just drop my needle right here and then place my ruler. I know that my ruler foot is a quarter of an inch away from my needle so when I go to adjust this I want to look on each side to make sure it's equal and then I want to make sure that it's it's nice and straight with the seams. So I like where it is. I'm going to pull back because I've got to secure my threads. So I'm going to do a couple of tie-offs. I'm going to place it. And when you're doing long arm quilt uh, ruler work, or on a domestic or on a long arm a stand up, you need to make sure that you have good control of the ruler. If I only held it back here, you see how it pops up? So when I get over here, it's going to go over my hopping foot and it can break the ruler. So I always want to have control. I'm not using these right now. They're for this side of the the set of the quilt top. I have it set on 11 stitches per inch and we are working today on a handy quilter 18. This is our rental machine that's in the back and it's pretty quiet back here that's why we come. So I'm going to turn my machine on and I'm just going to go around the block okay so I've got my first square done we're going to work on the other side before I come back and echo it because I need to change the foot and I don't want to take too much of your time doing that twice Okay, so now the next one that I'm going to do, the design I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt that one. That one just intrigues me because it overlaps, and so I want to see if I can replicate that. I did it last night, so let's see if I can do it again. I have drawn, you can't really see it because I used a, a light color, I have drawn a center line, so... <coughs> 
if I, that way I know I need to be in the middle. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is that I want to um, go ahead and line up this line where I've put the markings onto my baseline over here. So I want to do a, a triangle and I am going to go ahead and kind of do a stitch in the ditch. So I'm going to go up and then I want to come back here. Okay. So then when I have my needle right here, I am going to bring up my ruler until it stops and I want to make sure that I'm on my center line and my center point is right here my marking and I want to look on either side to make sure it looks equal and it looks pretty good so now I'm going to go around And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to go up until I get to my line that I have marked, which is this one, okay? And I'm tr trying to line it up with the needle. I'm going to slide my ruler up until it hits the foot and then I want to reline it. I want to line up to my center and then I'm going to do it again. Go around. And then I want to come back. And then I'm going to slide up once again. Okay. I'm going to line it up. And I'm going to stop here. I'll keep going down and of course it will adjust. I won't be doing a full side on this side just because I have a border. So I want to show you what it looks like so I can finish one of the other ones. Let me take this off. I don't know if you can... I picked a thread that kind of blends. It doesn't really stand out too much. So I'm going to see if Sharon can, I think I can, can you see that one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to say the stitching. So now what I'm going to do is I want to do um, an echo into one of these blocks so you can see that. So I'm going to change my foot. put my echo feet on. The echo feet have changed a little bit. This is an old one. If you purchase them anymore, they may be clear. I've had mine a really long time. And I, I really do like them, I have to tell you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the ruler back on. And I want to line up my, my ruler to see where I was. I want to make sure it's equal all the way around the edges as much as I can. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my bobbin thread and lock the stitches. Okay. And all I'm going to do is go around the block again. I'm going to lock my stitches. And let me get it out of the way so you can see it. And so I have echoed that one. 
And I may do something else on the inside of this or not. I haven't decided yet. So I'll finish this one off with an echo. I'll finish this row off. And then the next time we see each other next month, then this side will be done and then we will be starting on another side. So I appreciate your attendance. I appreciate your questions. And most of all, we appreciate you tuning in this fine morning. And uh, I hope it's a great day for everybody. Thank you.